Hey guys, the day is winding down. It's about 7.30 here, and we wanted to just make sure we showed you as much as possible why we had my co-star JJ from ASUS here today. And now we're gonna be taking a look at the VG278, which is a 144 hertz monitor. Now the big question that you guys are gonna ask is why 144 hertz? So JJ's gonna go over some of the features of this monitor and explain to you why 144 hertz actually does mean something to you. Right, JJ? Yeah, definitely. Um... We've actually been a really big supporter of NVIDIA and their 3D Vision product, um, and we've actually released multiple panels. Uh, so there's actually a second generation version underneath this one, which is 3D Vision 2 and support 120 hertz, as well as their first generation, which is also 120 hertz. Now there's a, a lot of, been a lot of discussion. Backlit is the shit. <laughs> There's been a lot of discussion, uh, you know, regarding 3D. And definitely, I think that actually, especially with the second generation 3D vision implementation and the Light Boost technology, you actually have a really great experience when you're talking about a natively 3D render title, um, especially in comparison to things like consoles. Not a lot of users know that most consoles, even when they're equipped for 3D, can only project 3D at 60 frames a second. Um, so it's, it's nowhere near the same level of immersiveness or, or fluidity that you're going to have on the PC, especially with the PC having so much more powerful hardware. But taking 3D out of the mix, Right when you're just talking about pure refresh rate, right? When you're talking of using a 120 hertz panel or 140 40 hertz panel, you're actually going to have a much better level of fluidity just in the desktop. So when you're talking about double clicking on, you know, Windows and in your file explorer and just seeing it kind of expand and contract or moving it from one side of the screen to the other, um, or just dragging things about. It's way more fluid, way more responsive. You just feel a much better experience um, when you're just talking about using your Windows desktop. Now, the other benefit is gonna be with like cool technologies like NVIDIA's incorporated with adaptive VSync, which allows you to go ahead and minimize any type of screen tearing. The higher the refresh rate is, you can keep your essentially your VSync enabled at higher and higher refresh rates. And of course, when the refresh rate drops out, in terms of uh, not being supported by the monitor, then it turns off and you're gonna get the tearing, um, but you're ideally gonna be able to have more time, especially with higher end GPUs, you know, like a 660 Ti, 670, 680, 690 card, to be able to have you know, the best of both worlds, have that high frame rate, have that vertical sync enabled, and be able to really give you a much better gaming experience. And even within the game, outside of the V-Sync, when you just have had that faster response time, uh, that, or that refresh rate, when you're just moving the actual field of view and your, let's say maybe your crosshairs uh, or your different HUDs, and they're moving on screen, it's just a much more fluid process. So um, outside, of course, a lot of the cool things that are on the monitor, such as like corrective aspect ratio for guys that are maybe playing older titles um, that aren't natively designed for widescreen. So this one you can change to 4.3, 16.9, 16.10? Yeah, uh, that, you know, there's, there's really nice features like that. You know, of course you have full actually adjustment in terms of the height, which is nice, you know, especially for in a gaming environment, you might be able to want to just adjust it for better field of view. Of course, you're also gonna be able to tilt the panel, which is a nice plus. And even actually have swiveling action so one thing to note folks on the back of the monitor back here <laughs> there's a little pin that sits at the bottom of the monitor down here and in order to use the adjustment you got to remove the pin now i didn't know that for the first couple of days i have it because i thought okay it's a cotter pin it's holding the monitor together and i was struggling with it. then i pulled the cotter pin and laughed at myself at how simplistic it was once you remove the cotter pin it's easy to move up and down and very fluid yeah, and, and, and uh, you can, of course, also use that to then lock it in place like you were stating. Um, you know, that along with, you know, the rest of just the nice functions and features that we have on here, uh, such as, you know, additional HDMI connectivity, a little bit more amplified speakers, you know, three watts versus most of the monitors that use one watts. It's definitely a nice plus. So when you're considering a new panel, you know, we, we offer a huge lineup of panels, even including now 2560 panels, which we're going to be launching this month. Um, so, you know, just something to give a little bit more insight. You know, we got a lot of questions from users relative to kind of what's good monitors to select. I and, get that question every day. What monitor should I buy? How should I choose buying it? And it can be confusing because there's a lot of different things to take into consideration, whether it's things like the, the refresh rate, the resolution considerations, you know, what type of panel? Is it an IPS? Is it a TN? How does that affect color quality? What are the presets? Uh, and, and all those well, things. And I also noticed that a lot of users, even though they own the Asus monitor, they don't even use the splitted features. Like, I really like the Splinter Fuse. You can go in, change things around, make it brighter. They have a bunch of different things for gaming.
streaming for movies. I like that. So instead of having to go in and you know calibrate everything, I just go and choose one of those presets, and it sets me up. I know it's a lot of people out there, even though it's on the monitor, they're not even using it. Well, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it comes from the fact that sometimes a lot of the best features aren't necessarily as understood, and that's part of the reason why we're taking the time to definitely bring that information. My, to mis- users. my features are always misunderstood. <laughs> you know, and, and lastly, the one thing that we definitely do want to touch on um, is that as part of considering a monitor, also consider the company you're buying it for and the response of service. Um, one of the things that we're really proud to offer is actually an advanced warranty replacement policy, where essentially if the user has an issue with the warranty, excuse me, an issue with the monitor... You'll pre-ship them one and by they return the other one. Now, does exactly. that work like most companies? You just charge their credit card for the amount, and then when they return the other one, you get the money back. Exactly. Well, it's not even that we charge it. It's a, there's a hold that's put in place on that, um, and so then there's a process. But you know, we definitely want to be able to make sure that you, the user feels confident confident that regardless of what happens during the lifespan of that product, so they're going to be, have a commitment. Let's just do something. Like, say that I was a user, and I got this monitor, and it went out, and I called up tech support. Mm-hmm. How fast could I really, if I really wanted to push it, how fast could I get a replacement monitor? Could I get one, like, even next day if I really needed it? Yeah, that's definitely a possibility in terms of the way that we actually handle that. Um, you know, in terms of all the overall turnaround time, most of the times if we get a call um, before 3 p.m., that's going to allow it to usually be facilitated to ensure that the RMA process is actually handled the same day. Now, I want to just, folks, you guys always send me these mails. We went through this big old huge thing about cat leap and all this stuff. Me, personally, I like working with a company that I know has a backbone that's strong. RMA procedures, warranties, all those things are important. So sure, you can go out and and buy monitors that all look exactly the same, but at the end of the day, the warranty procedure and the company you're buying from really have a lot to do with what you're buying. And people at the same time just misunderstand. They're like, oh, I can get a cat leap, it costs $10, you know, less. You might save $10 in the quick run, but in the long run, you've got no warranty support, nobody to help you out. And if your monitor goes down, you're just SOL. Yeah, definitely. I mean, at the end of the day, there's a collective uh, kind of multiple points to consider when you're considering a product, and definitely service is one of them, and we just want to let users know that uh, regardless of which product they're buying within our monitor lineup, we're standing backing to, uh, to back up that product. Now, currently, any of the 460 series or higher cards by NVIDIA will power this monitor. Right now, AMD doesn't have the technology, but they're currently working on a driver to support it. So right now, if you want to have the 144 hertz, you're going to need to use an NVIDIA card, but this is supposedly a temporary situation, correct? Yes, uh, we are working with NVIDIA to enable that, but right now, like you said, uh, any GTX series, 400 series, essentially, and newer, will be able to enable that 140, 40 hertz support. Let's talk a little bit about the backlit technology in the monitor, because a lot mm-hmm. of people ask me that. So what does having the backlit technology actually do for you, being the user interacting with the monitor? Well, uh, the biggest difference is going to be, one, power consumption, um, but an LED backlight is ultimately just going to give you more balanced color saturation with better response. Of course, with LEDs, they, they're they going to be more balanced in terms of their their overall tonality, let's say in terms of their color reproduction, and help to give you better response, especially for like darker colors. Uh, and So you get blacker blacks? Blacker blacks, exactly. Uh, overall, what's referred to as gradation. So the gradation, regardless of whatever the color scale is going to be, tend to be just superior on LEDs. Um, so that's really kind of the main advantage you're going to have is an improvement in power, as well as an improvement in overall picture quality. Now, what is ASUS's policy on dead pixels? That's actually part of actually our warranty process. Um, so in that regard, if the user were to have actually dead pixel, they can go ahead and actually uh, request to have a replacement. Even product. with a single dead pixel? Yes. See, that's a really good thing. You'll see some companies out there watch very carefully. One reason I get really pissed off at ViewSonic is they had this thing where it says, oh, five dead pixels. Well, between me and you, if I had five dead pixels, I want to throw the monitor out the frickin' window. So if you have any dead pixels at all and you're a picky user, cameraman especially behind the camera, you give him a dead pixel monitor, he won't even look at it. So that's a really good thing that most people overlook. And I think it's really good that Asus is able to exchange monitor with that type of situation. Yeah. Now, this monitor right now is going to come to market at about how much? Um, right now, actually, we're just literally launching it, so I don't have a confirmed MSRP. Um, but uh, I think you're going to be looking at about the $500 price point. Okay. Yes. Um, now, this one won't come included with the 3D glasses, so that is something to keep in mind. It's more focused for users that are looking kind of for that best response in terms of their desktop experience and the fluidity that they're going to have. But definitely, you can purchase the 3D Vision kit that's available at either e-tailers or online retailers. Now, like uh, before, JJ, I'm going to you, but before when I got one monitor from you, there was mm-hmm. two different packages. Correct. The monitor that I could get, it had the stuff built in, and you could buy the glass separately, or the package that you guys actually provided with you came with everything in it. Will users also have that same ability with this series to buy one that's a complete 
complete gaming package or just to buy the monitor? I think that's definitely going to be based on user feedback. Uh, the previous generation we had usually an HE and an H model, so one would actually come included with the full 3D Vision kit and the other one wouldn't come included with it. Um, so that just depends on user feedback. So we're looking definitely you guys Make sure out you there give the them your feedback. And mm -hmm. let us know, you know, what do you prefer? But, um, you know, at this point we were just trying to bring this new technology to the market and be able to provide it a little bit more cost, of, uh, cost aggressive price point. So that's the main reason why we've gone ahead and removed the, the three division classes right on well guys i know it's really hard to like you know show the features of a monitor but we're going to try tomorrow on our tech of tomorrow channel we're going to bring jj back over and we're going to actually try to give you some still shots and some videos where we actually show the difference between a 60 hertz monitor 120 hertz monitor and 144 hertz so wish us luck and we'll see you guys tomorrow